Hello, everyone. Uh, Mabuhai. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, this is the first time I've actually said that. I mean, I think I remember saying it before, but uh, I think in the Philippines we don't really say mabuhay. But you know, uh, because our guest uh, this week is coming to us live from the Philippines, I thought I might as well so, like say that. So mabuhay, everyone. Um, so it's Sunday once again. It's actually just. Uh, we still have like two minutes till two o'clock in the afternoon here in the UK. Uh, but I thought, well, last week we were late, so we're going to start early this time. And it's also nearly 10, nearly 10 o'clock in Manila, which is a bit late. So I thought I'll start early so we can finish early because, you know, it's, it's, it's late. It's like uh, bedtime in Manila now. So um, magandang gabi, uh, Pilipinas. Um, welcome to another episode of Ask the Drummer. So, like I said earlier, this week our guest is coming to us live from Manila, and I'm really excited about it because it's been a while since I had um, a Filipino drummer guest on Ask the Drummer. Um, yeah, so um, I'm excited about chatting to him, you know, mainly about the Manila music scene or the Philippine music scene, and of course uh, his drumming career and everything. So. Um, talk about the motherland. So my dear friends, uh, please welcome Ivan Brode. Is that Olga? <laughs> oh my, Hi. did I, do you know, I forgot to ask you before um, coming on live, but um, is it Brode or Brode or how do you say your name? It's uh, the second one. The second one was correct, uh, Brode. Yeah. Brode, okay. So it's Ivan Brode. How are you yeah. Ivan? I'm good, yeah. Uh, it's a bit late, but uh, you know, I can still do this, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. gigs Good. gigs start late, so <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm used to this, man. <laughs> like musicians, or like times. <laughs> um, right. What's the weather like in Manila at the moment? Because I've seen some people posting on Facebook that it's actually quite cold. It's like December weather or something. It is right. Um, I would. I'm not sure in comparison with the UK, but uh, of course it pales in comparison. But um, it's uh, it usually is 36 uh, here degrees Celsius, but uh, recently it's been around 20s, so 28, 27. It, it it's uh, it's cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's it's funny because sometimes I've seen one posted a meme that you know. Um, uh, Jose Marie Chan. <laughs> it's uh -huh. like when it's not to be cold, it comes up. It's like, hold on, it's only February. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> it's yeah. still cold, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's still not t shirt weather here in the UK. I mean, I've got to sort of like use another, you know, like a, a turtleneck inside my t shirt. So, um, yeah. So I just want to give a shout out to Mondo. Mondo Castro, your bandmate, uh, yeah. for the introduction, because um, you know it's really him. I asked him who the drummer is, and he told me that it's you. And also um, Alvin Santiago, uh, he also recommended you to um, ask mm -hmm. the drummer. So I just want to say hello to Alvin as well. Um, right. So welcome to Ask the Drummer. Uh, episode 114 is all about you, Ivan Brodath. Um, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, so where are the Brodaths from? Because it's quite an unusual name, isn't it? I get asked that a lot, actually. And um, I hate to say it, but I do not have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's unique. Um, but um, my grandfather was from Iloilo, so in the Visayas. So maybe yeah. I have some, you know, a plan there I haven't visited. And I don't know, it sounds foreign, right? It doesn't it does. sound Philippine. Yeah. <laughs> it intrigues me, but I haven't really met uh, the same last name or even um, something similar. <laughs> so yeah, I've worked in Citibank and Deutsche Bank, but no brothers anywhere in the world. <laughs> Oh, right. Yeah, because yeah, I thought maybe you've got, like, uh, I don't know, like, uh, what we say, foreigner. Yeah, but maybe, um, yeah, because it, it does sound very foreign, your last name. 
But yeah. you're from Iloilo. But that's, is that what uh, the yeah. like the ancestors are from Iloilo? But you are you uh, born in Manila? Yes. And yeah. born and bred in Manila, so proper yeah. Manila. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, because I know I, I've said this to you earlier that you know you're 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 quite young, and because um, I. I I was born in Manila as well, Santa Ana. I was I was born in Santa Ana, and I'm sure that your my Manila is different from yours. So, what was Manila like when you were growing up? <laughs> ah, okay, Manila. Um, if you're talking about the the metro, yeah. I, well, traffic is one of the you know popular <laughs> words to describe it noisy and um, I prefer to call it exciting yeah <laughs> lots of, of colors lots of noises and I'm not sure if it was the same back then but uh, growing up in Manila and studying in Manila I, I studied in, you know, in uh, La Salta so uh, I passed by Santa Ana from Mandaluyong that's where I that's where I you know, I, I lived yeah with my parents and then I, I passed by Santa Ana and, and then going to Taft Avenue. It's, uh, how do I say it? It's interesting. It, it's interesting. <laughs> it's ever evolving. <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure if in a good way, but I'm pretty sure it's, uh, it's changing. <laughs> it's changing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been to Santa Ana Church? Because that's what I remember from my childhood. Uh, I... <laughs> I used to go there quite a lot because our wow, school, man. the primary school where we used to go to, was quite close to Santa Ana Church. <laughs> yeah, that's a busy one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always, always busy. Anyways, uh, Aiden said that it's excellent sound and picture quality. Aiden is my tech support, so that's good when, every time he says that. So, um, mm. have you always been into music? Like growing, I mean, I know that Filipinos really are into music. I mean, it's like, we love singing and dancing. So what was it like for you when you were growing up? Ah, um, aside from, you know, the karaoke, uh, singing and <laughs> yeah. dancing, you know, um, my dad is actually an aspiring musician, was. So he's a drummer and he has his own band before. So we have our own drum set at home. And that's when the interest um, started. When I was in second year high school, I formed my own band. Uh, we had our own music. That was 2006, if I remember correctly. My first gig was in 2007. And the music wow. back then was, uh, the popular music was the emo rock, the punk oh. rock, and anything about rock. It was, you know, a, a noisy era. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We started covering, you know, Rage Against the Machine. And there's some, some, well, we like rap metal. Some, yeah, we went into the metal scene also. It was uh, quite interesting. Uh, and a uh, quite interesting era, but um, I had myself um, trained to be versatile. Well, just I don't know my personal conviction yeah. because my dad had me listening to different, uh, like the Beatles or like Rod Stewart, yeah, those okay. kind of music. I grew up listening to those artists, and I, I keep joking about this, but this is true. Though my dad um kind of like hammered michael learns to rock to us when we were growing up <laughs> i'm not sure why maybe it was his uh, favorite artist funny yeah. how i became a, a drummer of a metal band while listening to you know <laughs> michael learns <Yeah>. to rock <laughs> but that's well, how it started <laughs> yeah your dad being a drummer though um is that the reason why you were you drawn into drums or did you try learning other musical instruments? Um, no, not really. I started uh, as a, I started, my first 
instrument was actually piano. So, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I started learning the basic chords in the piano. We have an upright piano at home also. Yeah. And then I didn't like it. It wasn't for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then I played the guitar. I tried uh, playing the guitar because my my older brother and my older cousin they were playing guitar like every day, every single day. There's uh, an acoustic guitar, so I tried that. And, uh, I, I like it. And then yeah. uh, got into bass also because it's related to each other. And then the electric eventually my mom bought me one but um eventually i was led to you know playing the drums yeah. uh, for some odd reason the bands in uh in my circle they, they were looking always for for drummers for drummers so okay they, we, yeah yeah and then that's when it started i think i have to try drumming since my my brother is a drummer my cousin's a drummer. Oh, wow. My dad is a drummer. You know, and oh, uh, wow. here I'm, uh, I'm trying to be. <laughs> yeah, we're we're like uh, an enthusiast of drum, <laughs> yeah. drumming enthusiasts. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, like I don't demand and supply. There was no. There were no drummers. So. Yeah. yeah. I tried to to learn it since I have a I have a network, and then the rest is history. I became a drummer of every band that I joined. Did you have like proper drumming lessons or did you just so like teach yourself or your dad uh, teach you to play the drums? Um, not not really formal, but I, I started uh, with the basics, my cousin, but eventually my neighbor who was a, a drumming, a, he, he was a professional and a teacher. so. He was going into our house and taught me professionally. Well, how do I say this? Like in a school setting. So he taught me how to, to read the notes. And uh, but eventually, I, I forgot all about it and just you know enjoyed <laughs> drumming. So I, I wouldn't say I'm. <laughs> I I went to school or you know went to formal school in drumming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. No, <laughs> it's a long answer, but of just saying no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but being in a family of drummers, how many drum kits have you got at home, or is it just the one drum kit and everybody just saw like take turns and, and playing? <laughs> um, we always just had one, but um, there was an old one, and then we replaced it with a newer drum set. And the newer drum set was my practice kit. So yeah, we only had one, and we had a studio. Yeah. Where we all rehearsed because there, we had a we had a keyboardist, we had a bassist, we had a guitarist. So, essentially, the whole family can fill a band. So that's where we, <laughs> we hone our skills. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good. Well, you mentioned earlier that you started your first band when you were in second year high school. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was the? How old were you then? I'm 15 years old. 15? Uh, yeah. What was the name of the band? Raw Like Sushi. <laughs> it was based on an album of Mr. Big. Oh, Mr. Big, uh, the one who did uh, to, to Be With You or something? Is that... Yes. Maybe. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> it was a rip off. From their album raw like sushi <laughs> yeah yeah and um so how long how long did the band last i mean you were only in like second year high school and did you so like do gigs or like school i, I don't know what did what did you play or um so how, how you know how was it how was your band back then uh it really got far. We we were but we were popular in the school. So in a, just to give you a context, our school was around our high school per per batch we are four hundred students. So times four, uh, for first year to fourth year there are a thousand two hundred approximately students and we were a bit popular to these guys. 
So yeah. that's where our informal gigs came in. But mostly it was just school events. But eventually, I had uh, another band in high school also. So that's when my gig days started. Oh, okay. Uh, different from Roll Like Sushi, it's like yes. you've got another, another one. And you're also the drummer of that band as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were there any sort of like conflicts that having two bands or like uh, at the same time? Like drumming, I... like practices and stuff? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because our vocalist in that band is also the vocalist of Roll Like Sushi. So, you know, oh, I see. Yeah. So, you know, high school is very emotional phase of our lives so there were um um frustrations here and there but uh eventually the rolex sushi uh was dissolved and this band um it was it's called uh, sorry it, the, the, the name is uh the name of the band is utr it sounds like uti you know they always <laughs> tease us UTI, your band is UTI, yeah. not UTR. <laughs> that's, I think that's the one that I saw on your Facebook page. It's UTR. So that was uh, 2006, 2007? When yeah. you were yeah. that band? Um, what, does, what does it stand for? Because I don't know if it sort of like means anything here. Like I, I, Maybe in football terms or something, like if you're like a red or I don't know, up the red or something. I don't know, but I'm not sure. But what does UTR uh, stand for? It's uh, undoing the route. It's uh, no, um, it's actually based <laughs> on a math book. No, it's it's a geek um, <laughs> exercise brainstorm. We, we were looking at our, our math um, seat work, and um, it's off of math, our mathematics book. Yeah. And uh, it was all about square roots. So how about, um, let's just get this line, undoing the root. But instead of R-O-O-T, let's do it route, R-O-U-T, and just yeah, pronounce yeah. it uh, undoing the root. Okay. But it sounds funny, right? Undoing the root. But eventually the people got, you know, <laughs> got, uh, got to understand what you were on. <laughs> <laughs> was it wasn't you know, I know that in in the Philippines, it's all like they always say that if you're in a band, you get like po poggy points or something. You know, it's like everyone's all like. <laughs> well, is that I true? Don't brag, but, uh, but I think there's some truth in that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm not tall. I'm not super attractive physically. Oh. Yeah, but um, there were some hints, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, Good how thing I'm married now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so UTR, because uh, I didn't know about the other band that Raw Like Sushi, because I don't think you had you posted any photos when you were in Raw Like Sushi, but like you said, you know, you and the vocalist were in the same band, you know, together mm -hmm. anyway. So, um, so you started gigging, like doing proper gigs, not just school events, but uh, like going to music venues in Manila or um, yes. yeah. So can you tell mm -hmm. us what, what that was like? Because I mean, for a young, for someone who's so young, you know, doing all these gigs, because I never experienced anything like that when I was in the Philippines. So can you tell us more about it, please? Yeah, uh, we were actually fortunate. No when we were doing our gigs people were creating all these uh, they call themselves productions so they had this ticket selling scheme that's their business model where they they give uh the point person of the band um a number of tickets and we sell that if we if we you know if we are able to sell those tickets at a profit then we that's you know our commission but there's no really like a professional fee so that's our ticket to you know the the gig scene um in a studio where we are rehearsing or practicing as a band the one managing that invited us and yeah. that's when 
that's when it started our gigging you know days as a band and uh we were on the same scene the metal scene we were a uh, rap metal new metal band oh, playing yeah. like slipknot um i don't know if you know the pinoy band slap shop and um something mm-hmm. like that or limp biscuit yeah. corn oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Those bands were uh, really popular with us. That's our yeah. main influence. So anyway, um, when that invite, uh, uh, when we received that invite, we got to be connected with you know the productions and um, gigs were here and there. I was the I, I was acting like the manager of the band and oh, I see, okay, yeah. Uh, we went to gigs like into. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Sagiho. Uh, it was like the club dread of our time. Okay. Uh, and also, okay. yeah, that's in Makati. It was. Uh, okay. It's still no. It's still going on right now. It's still open, and uh, it's still um, one of the classic. I would say, uh, classic bars. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. But um. You were saying that uh, I, I was young for Violent Playground, but during that time, I was in high school doing all those gigs. The reason why those productions um, were approaching us because we were too young. And we are, well, they say that, uh, wow, you're good. Okay. Yeah. Um, can we invite you to our uh, to our event? And we, we went to ticket selling, to being invited to debuts or... Uh, how do I say that? Um, I'm not sure if you celebrate the booze in the UK. Yeah, yeah. Essentially like 18, the 18th yeah, birthday. Yeah, 18th yeah. birthday, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and um, weird because I, I just said metal band, but uh, getting invited. <laughs> to the yeah. But uh, they, they usually request like um, like, like Kelly Clarkson to, for us to cover songs oh, or so something okay. like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird, but uh, they like our bands, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's an important thing. But uh, if that was then, the genre, if that was the genre of you know that time, then maybe quite a lot of the young ones who were at that party would be, you know, so like could relate to it. So Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we were able to to introduce also our songs, our original songs in uh in the correct venue because uh, we had um there were two portions like the dinner the formal you know the formal dinner and then there was a the after party the after party the the guests actually invited us to oh, let's play your metal songs come on it's after party <laughs> there's no boundaries anymore come on <laughs> okay <laughs> sometimes there's mosh pits in the in the, in the yeah. event and you know everyone's wearing formal suits yeah. and you'll see people pushing each other it's, it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a mosh, mosh pit with so like all these uh, young people wearing gowns and so like formal clothes and things like that. yeah. But right. I mean, <laughs> I mean that that's really interesting. So you also you also did not just cover um, covers, but you had your original songs as well. Um, were you did you? Um, release those songs or were you able to sort of, like get them out or um, any sort of, like uh, any interest from the record record companies in, in the Philippines? Unfortunately, after high school, we weren't able to record our songs. So we went to, uh, we went to a recording studio after 10 years, literally after 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so we wrote those songs in 2007. Yeah. We were able to record them in 2017. Wow. Um, unfortunately, uh, we were already, you know, past that era, you know, the metal era. The rap metal was not in the rec- in the the radios anymore. Yeah. So we went ahead and became an independent artist. I released our songs. Uh, the, we recorded three songs because our bassist had to leave for his studies in the states so we had no bassist 
um, we cannot replicate his sound because he 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 did not give us his space for the rest of the recording. <laughs> yeah, and that we totally understand. It was an expensive <laughs> equipment. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, we had three songs. It was supposed to be five songs, but um, unfortunately, we weren't able to complete that five-song EP. So we went ahead and just um, uploaded the three songs. But I'm not sure if it's still available in Spotify because I did not pay for it this year. Yeah. Oh, see. But, uh, okay. Because I'm sure, I mean, you must have had a, a following back then. So if you're able to release it, then mm. your fans would be able to sort of, like find it. And you know, I, I, even though it's already ten years, ten years old, <laughs> <laughs> so, it was fine uh, for the yeah. couple of months, but uh, it eventually died down because they, they the, the the quote unquote fans felt kind of nostalgic. But uh, eventually it died down because, you know, it's not relevant anymore. We weren't creating any new material. Yeah. And the yeah. bands decided, uh, my bandmates decided to, um, can we just um, just stop it for now? But until now, <laughs> we haven't really uh, yeah. reunited, I guess. But you're still friends. No, you're, you're, still, you're still friends and you still see each other. Yeah. Yes. In fact, last week I was just in my in the wedding of our former vocalist. All right. I just uh, got married last week, and yeah. our guitarist was also there, and we're we're still good friends because we were high school, you know, close friends before we became a band. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what's that's really interesting is um, what you said about the gigging scene in Manila that. It's the band that's actually selling the tickets. Yeah, for, for the uh, yeah. So what happens if 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 the band so like so you won't be able to uh, you won't be able to play? Oh, not really. But we have to pay for it. So it's like um, oh, I see. So you don't get any talent fee. I mean, the talent yeah. fee is actually selling the tickets yourselves. Yes. Wow. Unfortunately. <laughs> that's very interesting. That's, that's a very the, the, interesting. Thought. The talent fee is the, the, the exposure. <laughs> oh God. That's okay. Right, okay. Um yeah, so after UTR, um, what was your next band? Or did you sort of like uh, did you continue playing the drums or um what happened after that? After that, I I joined Mondo's band. It's called Beautiful Letdown. So before okay. we joined the Violent Playground, you were in, yeah. in a band called Beautiful Letdown. That was in 2017 also. Oh, I see. Oh, I didn't know about that one. Because I know that Mondo's is in a band called The Pinup Girls. Is it The Pinup Girls? Yeah, The Pinup. Yeah. yeah, and they just released um, their their album as well on vinyl. So, what what's what's that band with Mondo like, and how long did, did it last? Uh, if I remember it correctly, it was just uh, short lived, around a year. Um, we did not know each other, so we had to build our relationship. And yeah. Mondo was a stranger to me. He. My fr our common friend uh, recommended me because Mondo was looking for a drummer, and yeah. he recommend my friend recommended me to to join Mondo's band, and eventually we got to be connected with each other. Yeah, uh, we played. Um, I think we had uh, four original songs. Um, when I left the band for personal reasons. Uh, they were able to secure uh, police records, if I remember that correctly. Oh, right. Okay. They yeah. yeah. They released a single. And um, unfortunately, it was just an acoustic uh, recording because, you know, I, I left the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but 
but we were so, still good friends. Yeah, because you know, and so like in in the band together in Violet Playground. But before I ask you about the um, about uh, Violet Playground, so you've always been so like right from like when you were a teenager, you've always been a part of the Manila music scene. Mm -hmm. Cause, yeah, I mean that's the one thing that I wish I had done when I was still in the Philippines. Yeah, you know, when I was living there, but we weren't allowed. You know, it's different. I think it's different for girls. <laughs> it's uh, oh, yeah. Joe Jackson, so like uh, I think it's a Joe Jackson song or something. But it's it's different for for us because we weren't allowed to actually so like go to all these gigs and go to music venues and things like that. But so. How involved were you, uh, you know, in, in the scene apart from having your own band? So did you do, did you go to a lot of gigs? Like, did you see a lot of bands, um, do you know, when, when you were a teenager? Hmm. Well, it was, it happened at the same time. When, when I started doing gigs, that's also the time when I started seeing bands. But yeah. before that, um, my first exposure to, to live music was you know, the Battle of the Bands. That's a thing here, right, in the Philippines. Yeah. So there's a Battle of the Bands in school, Battle of the Bands in, you know, in villages, and here and there, you know, in fiestas, there's also, you know, their own Battle of the Bands. Uh, the reason why... Uh, my brother's band always joined to the Battle of the Bands. So I was exposed to that. And when I do gigs, you know, um, I I think it's a bit different doing Battle of the Bands. Yeah. <laughs> just doing gigs. Because doing gigs uh, is mostly just enjoying music, your yeah, music, and others' music. Yeah, 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 it's true. Um, right, so what we're going to talk about, because this is really, I mean, this this is the one thing that really caught my attention is uh, Violent Playground song, Tupperware Party, because mm -hmm. whenever I go to work, I work on Saturdays in a record shop in Manchester, and um, I always have WXB 102 Mix LR on whenever mm -hmm. I'm working. <laughs> So and every every Saturday or mainly so like maybe every other Saturday but definitely I always hear Top of a Party and I didn't know who it's by at the time it's like I had to actually post it on Facebook to ask people who who was this because I thought it was like a, a someone like maybe the members or I don't know Doctor Feelgood or something like I thought it was a foreign sort of like a, a foreign song. Because it's such a beautiful, it really is beautiful. Now, um, Violet Playground, I had a look on uh, Google. Um, I think their album, Primordial Soup, mm -hmm. was released in 1996. But the band was actually from the 80s, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know that because when I was in, in, in the Philippines, when I was still there, I, I know the Dawn, of course. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, that's like the biggest. And, and yeah. um, Identity Crisis. But I realized that there was an album called uh, Ten, of a, Ten, hold on, Ten of Another Kind. And the yeah. Violent Playground song Top of a Party is included in that one. And that was released in 1989. I, I, I had no, I mean, I had no idea about this thing. But 1989, were you already born by then? Or how old were you? So <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> I was born in 91. <laughs> right, so how did you end up playing in Violet Playground? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> okay, um, here's the story. Um, Mondo Castro was uh, contacted by RJ, the 
the vocalist of Violent Playground. Yeah. So saying that, um, hey Mondo, we have to, we're gonna play for, for an event. Uh, we're we're thinking of real for, yeah, we're thinking of real nighting the band members, Violent Playground. But uh, um, we're currently, you know, um, lacking members. We need a guitarist and a drummer. So I know you're a guitarist, Mondo. So can you help us? Mondo said yes. So uh, he's the he's down the guitarist, the the rhythm guitarist. Yeah. And uh, surprisingly, I was actually, you know, touched no? uh, that that he thought of me. And yeah, I know a drummer. Uh, he was uh, my drummer in my former band, Beautiful Let Down. He, he's a close friend of mine. Okay, so can we meet together in in Green Hills? So I went yeah. to Green Hills. Uh, R.J. Mondo and I talked about, you know, the plan of Violent Playground. There were no auditions. Uh, Gladly, uh, fortunately, there was no auditions because, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I did not know the band, <laughs> so <laughs> that's how you know. Uh, at first, when Mondo called me, hey man, um, uh, Violent Playground is uh, needs a drummer, please call me ASAP. Uh, okay, it's a it was a Sunday. I yeah. was uh, in the church service when Mondo was calling me. <laughs> I was praying <laughs> and my phone kept on vibrating. Come on, Mondo. The Lord is my priority. <laughs> but anyway, um, the reason why he kept on calling because he was uh, about to he was about to ride an airplane and um, going to, to Hong Kong. So he was uh, in a rush during that time, and he wanted yeah. to secure my position because uh, he wanted me to to join him. Yeah, yeah. So, well, that makes sense because we already you know know each other, and then eventually, yeah, we we connected with RJ. I, I said yes eventually. Talk to my wife and uh, going back to the music scene. Before go before joining Violent Playground, I I stopped playing for uh, I'm not sure how many years, but three years, four years. Uh, yeah. I stopped doing gigs, the music scene. So it was a hiatus. So I was a bit nervous at first. Uh, had to talk to RJ really, you know, had to be super honest that, hey man, I'm not really in the best shape, and. Uh, he said the same thing. Hey, man, I'm not in the best shape, too. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's practice. Come on. <laughs> let's yeah, go, team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then our first practice as a band, um, I was really nervous because the drummer was there. Boom. Uh, his name is Boom Jose. So Boom was there, and uh, he was really looking at me um, when I was setting up the drums. <laughs> and, oh man, oh man, <laughs> this is really, <laughs> uh, really nervous. The pressure. Uh, the yeah, first the pressure song. of having the original drummer there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was the original drummer. He wrote the songs, all the feel of, the, you know, all the rationale behind the, the groove. Yeah. My yeah. goodness, how can I? Can I feel the shoes? He was really <laughs> looking at me, but he was really a nice guy. Even if uh, you know, I was just really nervous. I was overthinking things. But then the the bassist, um, well, he's not the original bassist, but they're good friends. His name is Nino. So Nino started playing the the Starvation Army. He was yeah. able to. Well, you know, bassists are really you know, fast in setting up their gear. So when he when he finally finished setting up, he started playing the riffs, the notes of Starvation Army, the, the, the introduction. Ah, the introduction. Sorry, the, the intro of the song. Yeah. And then I started playing with him. And then the drummer was like, "Oh man, I never really heard that song that good before." And then I was like, "Whoa, okay." Thanks for the compliment, but 
and I was still hell, hell nervous, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, the first uh, rehearsal as a band. We went yeah. through the three popular songs: "Never We're Party," "Never the Bright Lights," and um, uh, "Starvation Army." Yeah. Uh, we finished all those three songs, and um, I was actually grateful for Boom because he was guiding me all the way. Um, I was trying to spice it up with my own flavor at you know, <laughs> the first time I was playing it, but he was explaining it to me, the reason why it's like this, because um, it was like a cue for this and that. And then I yeah. finally got to, um, got my rhythm. And now we're, we're getting close. You know, um, his age and my age, we can be like, dad and son so yeah, it's, yeah, like, yeah. it's like that um yeah and he always he's always telling me, man yeah that's good i'm proud of you and uh, he's taking pictures <laughs> of me uh, yeah thanks dad <laughs> something <laughs> like that that's my yeah. <laughs> With, so uh, what, was, what was the reason why he's not playing uh in oh, yeah. background anymore um his press release to us was that you he, he's not able to practice at home anymore and uh, he's also got work commitments uh, to a point that it gets in the way of his practicing oh so, okay. yeah yeah aside from that he's uh, you know at an age where he thinks that um going to gigs might not I mean, going to gigs, playing the drums might not be for him anymore. So oh. he decided to to play the keyboard. Oh, oh, so he's still in the band. So, yeah. so he's still. Oh, right, I didn't know that. So he's still in the band, but he doesn't play drums. It, oh, yeah. I see. <laughs> oh, wow. That's the the reaction of the fans, actually. Oh, boom is. Still part of the violent playground, and then they see me in the the, the drum set, uh, and then I, I can see the people's faces. Where's Boom? <laughs> <laughs> He's right there. <laughs> Same <Thank> the stage. <laughs> I mean, I remember Mondo um, posting it on Facebook. He's really like happy. He's very pleased that he became a member or he became part of violent playground. So, uh, what's it, what's it like for you? And also, um, how long did it take you to rehearse or you know all those songs? Because those are already like established, and people know those songs already. So, what did they do? They, did they give you a, a CD or or did they give you the notes <laughs> or whatever? So, so how did you practice for? It? <laughs> um. They gave me links, uh, Spotify. So um, apparently, it was uploaded in Spotify. The the whole Primordial Soup album. Um, we practiced five songs in a month, and then after that, uh, we had our informal gig. It was a secret gig. We we decided not to make it public, but uh, it was like a practice gig. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because uh, the the original members were not comfortable yet. You know, play in the scene again. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. And um, you mentioned that uh, you talked to your wife before actually agreeing to uh, become a musician or become a drummer again. Um. So, well, what what was her reaction when? I mean, uh, <laughs> I just presumed that she actually came to the gig and saw you play, and so. Was she happy about it? What, what was her reaction like? <laughs> so, you know, being um, all these fans, so like, welcome back, Violet Playground, and you're now a member. <laughs> Funny thing, my wife hasn't um, been to one of her gigs because um, she's pregnant. So, oh, you know. Oh, yeah. I see, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're first expecting baby? it. But... Is it first, first baby or? Is it your second? Second baby. Oh, wow. When is she yeah. due? Uh, anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> She's uh, 38 weeks. So oh, we only see. have uh, you know, 
two weeks at at most. Overdue. So overdue, yeah. It's all you mean. Yeah, it's time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> need to be ready. I hope it's not during this podcast. So it will be finished soon anyway. So. <laughs> I hope so. But uh, you know, we have yeah. time. Don't worry. No contractions yeah. yet. Good news. <laughs> yeah. Well, Aiden, Aiden said that Violent Playground is a thriller made in Liverpool in 1958. I didn't know that. Because, you know, when I Googled Violent Playground, there's actually another band, mm. an American band called Violent Playground. And apparently they're like, trash metal which is more mm. i think your scene <laughs> it's more your scene than, than the violent <laughs> playground of all <laughs> finally <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah because um i noticed on facebook that it's actually called violent playground ph which is yes. why i think in 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 america when people when bands like the chameleons they have the chameleons uk or the mission uk things like that so yours is now violent playground uh, PH. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, I'm really interested about about uh, this because, like I said, that Tupperware party. I mean, what what's the reaction like? You know, whenever you play that, because uh, the drum parts in that is amazing. The drum and the bass as well. So, <laughs> so um, what's the reaction of the fans when if they play it? Um, how do I say it? They dance to it. They dance, they dance to the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure why, but um, but they do dance to the song. And uh, <laughs> in our last gig, it was a uh, you know in a stadium. There was actually a big stage, and people started to. There were a handful of people who started dancing, and the um, the that those dance moves were. You know, not familiar with me. Maybe it was, uh, you know, back in the eighties or nineties. <laughs> but it, it intrigued me. I, I was when I was still while playing the song. I was thinking, huh, good moves, man. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a lot of pressure to um, to play the groove. It was a simple groove yet uh, full of heart. Uh, you have yeah, to yeah. be in lockstep with the bass. You have to understand the whole Tupperware party concept. You have to, you know, listen to it intently. Why is it uh, structured this way? And when I when I started reading, you know, the lyrics, it was funny. It was really funny. <laughs> yeah, and that I think was the reason why people danced to it. It's just, it's a Tupperware party. <laughs> right. The band, I, I, I'm not sure if this is right, but did the band reunite just for that uh, New Wave inv Invasion event last year? Or was there already a mention of the band reuniting even before that, uh, before that concert in the Philippines? Mm. Well, it was the catalyst. Um, initially, they wanted to just finish that gig. But uh, before the New Wave invasion, we played in a handful of gigs. The, the members enjoyed playing gigs again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the passion was reignited. And now there are talks of uh, recording new songs, re-recording old songs, That's making cool, a music yeah. video, and uh, yeah, yeah. making like a documentary, something like that. But uh, nothing's still in the works. It's still in the paper. It's still in the drawing board. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, it, it's it's exciting because I've never been in a band that you know, thinks that way, and uh, that's how you know I I think about uh, the whole thing. Uh, they're veterans and i'm learning every time i i connect with them every rehearsal is like uh man you learn something new every day and uh, that's that is true yeah yeah that is right? true and yeah. they are better musicians than i am uh, at least that's what i see 
uh, Carlo Season, who's a, a, our electric guitarist. Uh, he was once, uh, he was the guitarist of Francis M before. Oh, wow. Yeah. And the, oh. the bassist also was a part of Francis M's original you know, backline music. Um, oh. Raton, the original member. Uh, I was really surprised because his, his tone is, he has a good tone. He has a good sense of music. RJ's voice is, you know, it's, it's ever the same. When I listen to the records, listen to the live, it's the same. And yeah. when Boom uh, was coaching me, started playing the drums, man, you should be here and I should be there just watching you. <laughs> You're a good drummer. But, uh, you know, yeah. Anyway, yeah. they're all good. They're, they're great guys and I'm learning a lot from them. And, uh, I'm just conflicted, you know, um, as a Filipino, if I should call them Tito or Kuya. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't want that. No. <laughs> they don't want to feel old. <laughs> they want to be, they wanna be, feel young. <laughs> so I decided to just call them by their first name. And but if, yeah, cool. of course. They're cool with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what was it like for you? Because when you did New Wave Inv Invasion, uh, I think that was the time when Peter Coyle was there and Steve Kilby, uh, Frank yes. Kurt, and a flock of seagulls as well. So were these the sort like the musicians you listened to, or were you were you new? <laughs> all like new to these? It's like new wave. I mean, what's that? What's a new wave invasion? <laughs> Honestly, uh, when I saw the when I saw the the poster, my reaction was, "Who are these guys? <laughs> uh, I don't know these guys." So I did my own, you know, diligence researching <laughs> because it was a big deal for Raton, for our bassist Nino, actually yeah. for the whole band. It, it, it was a big deal, and I was just. Uh, Okay, who's Peter Coyle? Who's Steve Kilby? <laughs> <laughs> and I started listening to, uh, to their music. It's quite enjoyable. Yeah. It was not my ear, of course, but uh, no. <laughs> it's good music. Especially <laughs> Peter Coyle. Uh, I was surprised. Uh, his voice is, you know, really good. Especially yes. live. Yeah. It, was still, yeah. it was still excellent. Yeah, it, it so he sounds pretty much the same as if as you were listening to a record or so. <laughs> like, yeah. exactly. As I saw him, I saw him recently. It's absolutely amazing. But new wave in the Philippines, even though it was so like you know my generation, like in the eighties, but it's very much alive um, back home. I mean, mm -hmm. this quite a lot so i think they're gonna do another invasion soon or something or sometime this year i think so uh, are you gonna be involved as well so what's what's the uh like latest or anything planned for violent playground mm -hmm. uh we don't have a, a full list yet but uh, there are invites of uh upcoming gigs but the confirmed one we have on feb 26 that's a Monday for that's that will be in 19 East Sukat, and uh, there's also on March 5 on the same venue, 19 East. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, I think Violent Playground, you could you, I think it's considered this a new wave band, right? <laughs> so. That's what I. That's what I know. Yeah. So when when you do the when you do these gigs, do you um, actually get um, a new fan base like uh, with you there being young and so um, like I know a lot of the uh, the new waivers <laughs> go to Violet Playground so like gigs, but do you also get like new fans? I'm not sure if I can call them new fans because. I really didn't wasn't acquainted to the to the old fans, but uh, anyway, but I I see some of my you know my my age in the scene, and you know, 
they were uh, please sign my album please yeah can i yeah. take a picture with you and uh, i also invited my friends and they were like wow you violent playground i thought you know uh, listening to the spotify it won't be this exciting but man it was really good okay so for millennials i think we can get new fans and you know yeah. to do that, <laughs> new wave again to the to the masses so you know, just hope <laughs> But um, yeah, I think to answer the question, there are new fans, and um, it's quite new to me because no one has really asked for my signature. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the first time uh, in our in one of our gigs. Yeah, yeah. Funny because uh, some people uh, wants me to to take the picture of the you know, with the with, with the original member. For example, there was a there was a um, instance where, hey, uh, can you take my picture with Raton? And Raton was, you know, smirking because he's bro, a drummer. They, 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 did not, they have no idea. He's a drummer, you know. <laughs> you know that he's the drummer now, right? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. But, um, I just find it funny, then I just tell them. Uh, well, they won't be. It's a good surprise later when she go up the stage yeah. and they'll see me. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, did you not get that same reaction when you were in UTR, or maybe in those days people didn't really take photos? Or... <laughs> they weren't really a big deal, but um, there was a following. So yeah. since it was a small fan base, we were like uh, really friend. We got to be friends with them. Unlike you know this level, they think that uh, I think I think that the difference now is that Violent Playground has already established who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to go and see Violent Playground someday. Hopefully, when I'm next um, back in the Philippines, then I will find out if there's a gig and I will see you and I won't ask you to take photos and I will have a photo with you. <laughs> and probably ask Let one of know. the band members <laughs> probably ask one of the band members to take it. It was all like a photo of you. <laughs> Sweet revenge. <laughs> So, but you mentioned you mentioned that um, there there are plans of sort like writing new material and recording and uh, but is there a plan of um, reissuing Primordial Soup on vinyl? Maybe because yes. a lot of, you know a lot of bands are doing it. Uh, so, uh, are you doing it this time or? Uh, something's cooking in the vinyl. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think they'll be releasing it soon. So, oh, that's so good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's something to look forward to. And uh, the gigs at um, 19 East, you said, yeah. yeah. Those, those will be, um, yeah, that's, that's that's brilliant as well. So I've still got a few questions to ask you, uh, mm -hmm. but. Oh yeah, the, the regular questions that I ask. But first, do you get recognized now that you're in Violet Playground? Like, you know, uh, when you're not drumming, I mean, uh, what keeps you busy? Are you sort of like, you know, like go to work and then do people recognize you? <laughs> the the one active in the music scene, yes. But uh, in, we're not really in mainstream per se. So the one who really follows the bands, sometimes, yeah. sometimes they, I notice that they're looking at me and then they'll approach me. You're the drummer of Violent Playground, right? Uh, sometimes <laughs> my, my, <laughs> I'm thinking of something and then someone's, someone's approaching me, Violent Playground, Violet Playground. Uh, uh, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, th there were some instances, and um, funnily, one of those instances was a uh, was a coworker of mine, and uh, he was surprised. He was, uh, I thought, you just looked like him, <laughs> and that's me. <laughs> so you're getting used to sort of, like people asking you for photographs now, and photographs and signatures. 
No, I still get you know awkward and shy. I, I'm not used to it yet. Yeah. I hope it doesn't um, go away. <laughs> yeah. I want to be that way. <laughs> Yeah, because in, in Manila, I think I've seen it on Facebook uh, loads of times that, you know, it, the Filipino fans, they also like to have photos with, uh, like, the musicians, you know, like, the mm. bands, they, you know, they've been to see. and things. So it is quite active, the fangirling or the fanboying sort of, like, thing. Yes. In the so, yeah. I would say. Yeah. yeah. Um, right, so... Um, before I let you go, because I know it's getting very, very late, I've got these regular questions I always ask. First of all, do you twirl the sticks when you play drums? Do you do that? With your... I used to, but now <laughs> does it fit the context? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to stand out. <laughs> so I don't anymore. Doesn't want to, so like, hey, you don't do that in violent playground. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> We're too old for that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you have done it when you were in other bands like UTR, like yeah, 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 yeah. With yeah. the high energy songs. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, did you go and see a flock of seagulls when you were supporting them? Because Kevin Ryan, yeah. he's absolutely amazing when it comes to twirling the sticks. He's like twelve, mm -hmm. boom, twelve. Boom. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was amazing. We were there during sound check, and the, um, they were the last band, the New Wave Invasion. And my goodness, I was surprised. They were still a good band. Yeah, yeah definitely. They are, they are. They're amazing. So, do you consider yourself a new waver now? <laughs> are you a new waver? Oh, not yet. I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm starting yeah. to like it. <laughs> but what about drumming heroes? Who are your drumming heroes? Uh, number one is uh, Mike Portnoy of, the, of Dream Theater. Yeah. Um, pro progressive rock. That's their uh -huh. genre. Second is uh, the late Pat Torpe of Mr. Big. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, it's like a different, really, Bonham. music scene. It's like, what about uh, Bonham? John Bonham? Ah, John Bonham? Yeah, Led Zeppelin. Like. Yeah. Um, indirectly. We used to play Black Dog for, uh, for another, you know, project, uh, band project. But, uh, it was a blues band that never really, you know, like each other, we never liked each other because we were, you know, sinking. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, John Bonham, I like him, but um, he was never really, he never really had a big influence in me. Oh, but okay. I like yeah. his feel. Uh, that's where I got the, you know, really playing from the heart. Uh, John Bonham, when you see him, he's really in the zone. He's really you know, feeling the song yeah, more than yeah. the technical, right? That's more yeah. important. Uh, what about the drummer of Violet Playground? The original drummer? <laughs> when I got to know play. him, when I got to know him, yeah. uh, this is this is my honest reaction because um, there was a time when I was in Australia and um, I was out for the rehearsals and uh, we were recording the rehearsals every time so this particular rehearsal he played the drums for the you know for the whole band to get by and uh you know to to, to perfect you know each part but um I, I wasn't there unfortunately and the recording I, this is my reaction was you know it's really different when the original member plays it you 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 really get to feel every groove, every um, you know, every feel. There's an intention, and uh, even if he's not the best of, of the best, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know that he cannot be replaced because he wrote the songs. He was there. It's really different. I, I cannot explain it well. I'm not doing him justice, but um, 
what I can say is that it's hard to fill his shoes for the band. Although he's saying that, you know, no, you're good, man. You're good. You're, you're, keep playing for the band. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I keep telling him that, you know, your feel is different and um, no one can replace that. He, he's yeah. good. And uh, I, I kept teasing him, you know, boom, that feel in that song and that, in that chorus, I can't do it. I keep on making it, you know, I, I can't give that justice. I just say, no, 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 you're just different. I can't do your feels also. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the pressure must be so like you know, it must be so like having the original drummer there, but playing keyboards instead. <laughs> <laughs> he enjoys it though. I, I'm not sure. Do you ever so like look at him? It's like, oh my god, what am I doing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I s sometimes feel embarrassed for myself because. Uh, what did I do to the drummer? <laughs> uh, I cannot forgive myself for stealing the spotlight from him. But, you know, no, uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the guys. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you're writing new material, and then with you being the the, the drummer now, so I'm sure it's gonna be really, really good. Um, next question is: Have you ever had any? accidents or disaster i call it drumming disasters um because you've been playing since you were in high school mm -hmm. have you ever hurt yourself or fallen over the drum stool <laughs> the, 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 like your chair <laughs> <laughs> um there was once one instance where i was uh, in a drum cage and there was also a roof above uh, uh, the drum cage it's like in a small venue, that's why it's uh, there's a drum cage. And it was mic in. Everything was mic in. And I, was, I was playing. It, it, a, a plank of wood fell on my head. <laughs> it, it did not hurt. Unfortunate. Uh, well, I was fortunate to not get a hit on my head. It was like a three fourth, three fourths inch. Uh, oh, plywood. So, okay. but what was unfortunately, the, the 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 drum set was open enough for me to keep playing the groove. <laughs> but but what was the cage there for? What what was so like? What what was that? What why was the cage there instead of just sort of like being open? Uh, the cage was um, there because. There were older audiences for that gig, so uh, the the sound engineer wanted everyone to tone down a bit. If if the drums uh, is open out in the open, you know, um, grumpy oh, men will you know <laughs> they they will complain, <laughs> and I, I've had several of that those gigs. And, you know, one of the scenes, one of the scenes in the Philippines, it's evolving. <laughs> but uh, it, was a, it was a private event anyway. That's why the setup was like that. Oh, I see. So it's so like to dampen the the sound or the noise that, that the drum is yeah. making. So, oh, right. It's not because of, I don't know, because I'm trying to sort of like remember uh, a time that I've been to a gig where they had like, some sort of a cage. Mm. I think you'd be 40. I think you'd be 40. They had something similar, but I don't know why it was for. But yeah, so that's that's why it is so that it's not too loud for, for yeah, the grown people or the, the, the older one. Right? Yeah. Okay, well, my last question is <laughs> that was all like Aiden was all like saying, it's nice conversation. It's an interesting perspective from the Philippines, which is very true. I mean, I'm learning a lot from sort of like the gig scene in, in Manila, in the Philippines. Um, but yeah, the last question is, what would be your advice to um, aspiring drummers? Or um, knowing that you're still very, very young and your dad uh, is or was a drummer, uh, you can also say what was the best advice that was given to you? Mm. 
maybe three words. Uh, just keep practicing. Um, I, I consider my violent playground. Um, I want to call it stint no? journey, violent playground journey, as a breakthrough for me. It was a it was a big deal. It is a big deal for me. So yeah. I just kept practicing and practicing until you know um, I got an opportunity. If I stopped practicing, uh, I would have I would have been you know in a different path. I wouldn't be drumming for violent playground. Yeah, yeah. I stopped playing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's very good of Mondo as well to so like think of you when they were looking for a new drummer. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was touched actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wish you all the best and I'm I'm really looking forward to so like I don't know when I'm gonna be back home, but uh I'm definitely going to go and see Violet Playground next time I'm back. Hopefully you're playing um when I when I go back home. Um, so do you want to just sort of like in, invite um, our friends in the Philippines so like, uh, you know, to your gigs uh, at East, yeah, East 19? 19 East, sorry, 19 East. 19 East, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, hi to my Filipino friends and fans, um, even strangers. If you're February <laughs> 26, <laughs> I'm inviting you to our gig, 19 East. Um, see us, Violet Playground. We're back. <laughs> yes, welcome back. And thank you. Also, uh, interesting news about the reissue of the album as well. And hopefully new material will be out soon and more gigs and everything. So good luck to all of that. And thank you so much, Ivan. I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, I know it's mm -hmm. late. Uh, bedtime for you now. <laughs> So, yeah, sure. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and say hello to your wife and you know hope it's a, a safe delivery and you know good luck do you know if it's a boy or a girl it's a girl you know a girl and the first yeah. one is the uh, first one is a girl also <laughs> oh, we're girls we're brilliant <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thank you very much well, Anne. Yeah, thank you. And uh, well, good night. I'm not going to say enjoy the rest of your weekend because the weekend is finished for <laughs> you now. So, good night. And thank you so much. Hope to meet you someday soon. All right. Thank Take you. care, Alvin. All right. Bye. 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 Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us live. That was really, really good. I mean, I, I like talking to um, drummers in the Philippines because I do get to learn about all these so like wonderful wonderful things in manila that i never experienced when i was there it, it's, it's different for us in the 80s you know so um yeah but hopefully that's you know hopefully we can go back to the philippines and then uh, enjoy some of the gigs there um fingers crossed but uh yeah thank you all so much thank you ivan that was really really good and uh please keep an eye out for next week's guest announcement post it's going to be another awesome drummer for next week and as always uh love music love life love 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 drummers they're just absolutely amazing and good luck to violent playground i'm really a fan of that Tupperware party. That's just an amazing so like song. And for my non-Filipino friends, if you haven't heard of that uh, that song, uh, go on YouTube and check it out. It's Violent Playground Tupperware Party. It's such an amazing song. So um, yeah, that that's all for me for now uh, for this week. So I'll see you all again next week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. So um, yeah, bye for now. Bye. -bye.